All right, in this video, I'd like to build a coin flip simulator. Uh, we're going to continue our work with if statements, but we're going to add random numbers to it so we can get some randomness in there. Um, so there's some start code, so feel free to uh, download that start code and open it up. Um, before we start looking at the start code, though, I just want to play around with math.random. Okay, and we've used the math object before. I think we've used it for like math.square root. Right, and you can take the square root of something. Um, but along with this, whoops, I think I hit caps lock. Here we go. Math.random. And math.random is a function again, uh, a built in function. It has native code in it. And to call the function, we use those parentheses after it, right? To say, function, do your job. And the job of this function is to return a decimal between 0 and 1. Okay, so if I hit up arrow to repeat it, I get a different random number each time, a decimal between 0 and up to 1. So our highest here was 0 0.979, etc. Just have a quick little diagram here, right? If you give it as a number line, right? 0 is inclusive. It could include 0. And it will go up to but never equal 1. Okay, 1 is exclusive. 0 0.99999, whatever. Um, and it generates a random decimal between 0 and 1. Okay. Now that's going to come in handy um, with the star code that we have here. The star code is very basic. I just did it mainly so that you guys didn't have to find images. I have a heads and tails coin image that we can use, um, although we'll probably just start with text to begin with. Um, the HTML is very straightforward. We just have flip the coin and hopefully something will happen. And I've got a little output element, a div here, with the ID output and a button with the ID BTN. So let's get started. Um, in the JavaScript here, and we'll add our um, button event listener, right? So we'll get the element with the ID BTN, add a click event to it, and I like to just call this function BTN clicked, because that's what the code that we want to run when that happens. Okay, so let's start by generate a random number. Right, so we just saw math.random is the function, followed by parentheses. But I'm going to want to save, right, this function returns the random number. So I'm going, to, I'm going to create a variable called randnum, and I'm going to assign it to be whatever this function returns. So this variable should save the random number that this function generates. And then we'll just do a little console.log of randnum, just to, in the console, just to quickly check what's inside of this variable. So hopefully that all works. When I click this, yay, I get a random number. Every time I click it, we get a random number. Awesome. Okay, so now that we've generated that random number, I'm gonna leave the console.log there for now. Um, let's um, simulate the coin flip, right? And basically this is a, a binary situation, right? Um, I either get a head or a tail, right? So a binary if statement. So technically, I think we just want to go to about that 0 0.5 mark, approximately. And if my random number is from in between 0 and 0 0.5, I'll get a head. And otherwise, we'll flip a coin, uh, a tail, sorry. We are flipping a coin, but the result will be a tail. All right, so 0 0.5 will be that kind of that cutoff. So if randnum is less than 0 0.5, then I want to, well, let's get that element with the ID output and set its inner HTML to be heads. And then we can add our else, right? Just testing that random number. If the random number that gets generated is less than this, do this, else. Um, might as well copy and paste here, control C, control V. And then we want to change this to tails. And hopefully, ta-da! Okay, yeah, 0 0.33 is heads. 0 0.6 is tails. Anything less than 0 0.5 gets a head, and anything greater than 0 0.5 gets a tail. And that looks like it works. Ta-da! Okay, as easy as that. Um, like I said, everything you've learned about if statements still applies here. Just instead of testing um, input from the user, we're going to have a random number that we can use to, to simulate the results of something. Uh, the only thing we can change here is, well, let's do this. This uh, 
we're doing this get element by the output twice here. So I'm going to copy that. And I'm just going to create a section here for my, I like to call them HTML variables. And I'm just going to create a variable called HT output element. That's EL, short for element. And it's going to store this element. And notice I'm not going dot inner HTML or dot value. It's literally just, hey, document, please get this element and save a reference to this element in this variable. And now whenever I did that here, I can replace it with my variable. Because this, this output element variable is storing a reference to that element. And it just shortens the code up a little bit, makes it a little cleaner. And it's a little more efficient as well, because instead of having to search the document um, multiple times every time I click the button, we just do it once here. Okay, and instead of this, we have these images here. So let's go inside of here and do an image tag where the source is equal to. And notice I did double brackets outside of for my string. So inside of here, I need to do single brackets. And we'll go img slash heads.png. And let's copy that. And go to here. And change that to tails.png. And hopefully that works. Yeah, put an image element in there. Images are self-closing elements. This isn't necessary, but it's good to be consistent. Uh, all right, let's try that. So flip coin, ta-da! And okay, yep, and there's the tails. Tails again, tails again, heads. And we've got a coin flipper. Okay, awesome. All right, hope that made sense. Take care, and we'll see you in the next video.